Where are we going, Chris? A road trip. A, a six and a half hour six long road trip. Six and a half trip. hour long road trip. The good thing is we are already about halfway there. It's very true. You know, we've, we've run out of stuff to talk about, so I figured we would talk about our road trip. And today's adventure is I'm ready to get a larger machine, a bigger excavator. I, uh, I've been wanting a little bit bigger at Squitter, getting some bigger projects. I think it's going to speed things up. I have a budget to work within. I know that this machine's not going to be used um, as much as like the Volvo 220 is going to be used. Um, I want something when I get on a big clearing job. I can use it to help dig up the stumps. A big dirt moving job. I got three jobs coming up that I could really. I got a lot of dirt I need to move on. Uh, about 12 weeks ago, I did reach out to Volvo trying to find a, a, a larger machine and their inventory is really low. Uh, we found a 380, but they wasn't able to get it in time. It's been on rent. The company hasn't taken it off rent. And I'm to the point now, unfortunately, I, I, I've got to have a machine um, for the jobs. You know, I can't keep putting off on the jobs. Uh, I need to get them done. So I reached out to the guy. I actually uh, talked with Clint, CNC Equipment and he had a couple of John Deere's. Uh, actually, we bid it on a John Deere 350G, but it went over budget. <laughs> and uh, uh, Steven up here at Neil Equipment, I contacted him to see if I had bought my Komatsu dozer from him. I was just joking. I was like, do you happen to have any, any 350 size machines on the yard? And I was like, and he responded back. He's like, yeah, act actually I do. I've got three machines on the yard. I got a, a Link Belt 350, a Cabelco 350, and a Hyundai 330. I was like, well, they're not exactly the brand that I want, but kind of to the point now, I'm like, I have a budget to stay within, and I just can't go out and spend 400 grand, 500 grand on a new 30 ton size machine. Um, I'm looking for like an 80,000 pound machine, and these could possibly be candidates so we're going to take the trip i trust him he's always been good with the dozer and everything make sure everything's right um so there's uh, a speed trap ahead there's a speed trap ahead uh so we're going to drive up here to uh, pennsylvania and uh try them out and see see which one works for me i guess and uh, hopefully one of these three will will be the right one like i i i'm to the point now i need a machine so uh Probably, I'm going to narrow it down between those three and probably pick one today. So exciting let's, stuff. Let's see. I hope we're not wasting a trip. So oh, we, I, it, we're having fun. I've seen something. pictures. These are <laughs> these are pretty good. They look good. They look good. So we'll find out here in about three more hours when we get up there. Well, we have I'm made it. Carolina. We are not. We got. We're in Amish country. Mennonite. I don't know what. Anyways, six and a half hours later, we have arrived got a hyundai 330 and a cabelco 350. we're going to try it out see if we can pick one of these two as the uh next big machine so you kind of know why i'm out here looking for a bigger machine and this is the same guy that i bought my komatsu dozer from we have a 2019 hyundai 330 l it has 1500 and 90 hours on it i think 1598 so might as well say 1600 hours uh quick coupler 54 inch bucket he did say we could swap the buckets out if i wanted the bigger one i think i want the 60 inch bucket all in all it's in really good shape i uh i like the pictures he sent we're gonna smoke it over here got a 2020 cabelco this one has 1200 hours on it I think this one's a little out of my price range. Um, I'm looking for a bigger machine, but also a affordable machine for the amount of hours I'm going to put on it. Let's see. So he said he's had this one for about two years. They've put about 100 hours on it using it. He does rent equipment, but it doesn't seem to be have rented out. He said nobody likes the Hyundais for some reason. But uh, yeah, undercarriage looks really good on it a few scuffs on it nothing nothing major that's been repainted which one 
What cooler is that? That's the radiator. Is that the hydraulic cooler? It's probably hydraulic. It's definitely set up different than uh, what I'm used to. Air intake right there, pattern changer, fuse panel, batteries, coolant, washer fluid, everything. Uh, everything looks good on it. These do have a Cummins engine in them, so that's a good thing. I don't see anything, no hydraulic leaks or anything, which 1600 hours, it really shouldn't be leaking. Pump, pump looks good. We have 1518 hours on that hydraulic filter. One of 20, 21. or 21? 21. 21. So two years it's only had uh, about 80 hours put on it. Said it had a little, they've done a little body work to it. That was bent in, but new door. Fixed all that. Hydraulic oil. So this one does take def. Looks like that goes right there. Boom looks good. I don't see any patches on that. Come up here, Kyle. Let's check out the motor in this bad boy. Look at the fuel tank. That is a huge fuel tank. Expensive. Expensive. Welcome to the 350s. 330 size range. Everything is so much bigger. Just 300 wow. Range. 300 range. Look how much bigger those hoses are than like a 220. Let's check out the engine in this bad boy. See what we got. Oh, not used to the 300 class lifestyle. Look at that. Yeah, Kyle, uh, they had a grading and utility business. They're used to uh, 300 plus. 300 size <laughs> equipment. That's quite the motor. So I kind of, I like that. I like it that the hydraulic cooler is separate from that. That way you don't end up with the series of, series of radiators and what happens is it gets all plugged up to where everything you dust dirt debris when you're clearing leaves get in there plugs up the radiator stuff doesn't cool i like it to come ah uh, yep yeah. so that that is beneficial the mechanic that works on my stuff has all the software for that you gonna check the oil in it we'll get a rag check that yeah before we fire it up there. I like it. I think, uh, I think we'll check everything out on it real quick. We'll fire it up and go try it out and see how it does in the dirt. It's exciting. That's a nice machine there too. That's a 350. So it's slightly bigger than the uh, 330. That's, that's the range I was, I'm trying to stay around the 330 to a 380 size. And uh, really, it all boils down to my budget. So let's uh, let's grab a rag and check some fluids and uh, go try it out. Chris, we're not as young as we once were. Uh, I'll be gasping for air by the time you get up here. No. Gasping for air. Oh, you got to turn it. There are safety features. Have you run an excavator before? Not, not one of these. Not one of these. So I'll, I get scolded for not you know, wiping the dipstick off before beforehand. So you got to got to put it at the right spot before you check the oil. It's got a six foot long dipstick. Brand new oil too. It does have nice clean oil right where it needs to be. A little, a little bit low, but we only got like six it's inches. in the range. But it only holds like 15 gallons. Let's fire it up and uh, do the twirl. How does this work? Pull the handle. Oh. There you go. You got to do the swoopty doo. Excavator shopping with Chris. So, oil checked out good. Undercarriage, like I said, looks good. This one does have the standard stick auxiliary hydraulics esco quick coupler 
So, I mean, it's literally, it's ready. It's ready. We are going to try the Cabelco out too, just for uh, reference. We drove this far, so might as well check it out. Let's see what the cab looks like. So definitely, definitely a little more plain Jane. But like I mentioned, I need a machine to use for bigger jobs to get it knocked out quicker. That's what I'm looking for. I got a budget to work within and I think I think this is going to work. A little sunshade here. Well, that's nice. You can actually block out the all the sun. Pretty good visibility if you notice on the Kabelko. It's got that higher uh, engine compartment right there. and kind of blocks your view from behind, which this does not. You have to remember these are pretty big machines, so uh, you have a lot that swings over. You got to be careful with it. So let's fire it up and see uh, see what it looks like. You want the honors? Oh, can't wait. Oh, can't wait. Here we go. Oh, that's a phenomenal screen there. The air conditioning's thumping in it's, there. It is pumping the, the snowflakes. Well, not quite yet. We got to figure out how to work the snowflakes. Oh, air conditioning. Oh, this is fancy. It's over here. No. Set. Oh boy. Oh, we want air conditioning on. Set the temperature. That's a lot of push buttons. We don't need all, how do you set the fan speed? Oh, there we go. A little more difficult than it should be, but that works. Let's see what it does.
let Kyle give it a try. Now I can stand on the outside and uh, see it for myself. I think we put the 60 inch on there and see what uh, what that'll do. That stuff is pretty hard too. It's yeah, packed I'm in there. Laying, I'm laying, it to it. laying it to it. Let's try out the other one. We'll try out the bucket. All right, let's try out the uh, Cabelco and compare it to the Hyundai. We'll say the everything's good to go. Better. See, that's what I've never understood. Is what like, is that? It's the quick coupler. It's like even. See, I've never understood like from the factory why they don't have like a factory quick coupler. But I mean, this is a three-year-old machine and it's still not, got. Not everybody yeah. <laughs> you know? Where's the heated seat at? Alrighty. He gave it a half a tank of death. Yeah, just put two and a half in. Wow. It'll probably change. Probably be gone in ten minutes. Already? <laughs> huh? There you go.
we're gonna do the swap put this larger bucket on the 330 see how it acts should be fine What'd you mess up now? Well, evidently the 330 Hyundai bucket won't fit on the 350 because the Hyundai has a 100 millimeter pin and the Cabelco takes a 90 millimeter pin, which I find strange that a little bit smaller machine has bigger bucket pins than a 350. And there's a 330 cat bucket there that has 90 millimeter and 80 millimeter. So. We got the bigger bucket on the machine. Let's see if it uh, handles it a little bit better. The Cabelco seemed to handle it fine, so let's see how the Hyundai does. Let's definitely notice the bigger. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I don't know why, but it's just, I like the red boom and the gray and the black. But this one's not for me. Not quite. It's not ready either, so. 
<laughs> Missing some things. It's nice to have a shop big enough you can put a 350 in here with swing. Up. <laughs> and not, not hit the ceiling. Crane and everything. What you think, Kyle? You like it? Sold. Sold. Send it on. You get one, I'll get one. I'm, I'm okay. I, I'm, we're back trucking now. That 320 is still there. You could buy that today. <laughs> they did a heck of a job on this. I know what it's like to repaint a link belt. That I is did that true. 2800. Well, I did the gray. I sanded it all down, fixed the 10,000 dents and scratches. In it. My 2800 had a, it was a 27 foot long logo. It's becoming a roll from there. We go all the moon had to strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun. I, I, one of my, uh, well, I measured it and just like cut it off. And then I was like, this one right here got a little crooked. I, I can't get a, it's like 15 feet across the back of an excavator. We'll try. <laughs> they were like, okay, our decal guys, they can't do it. Let's just put the big logo on top of it. Oh, it's easier to touch up when you accidentally swing into something. You don't have a big stripe up here that it's all smeared. <laughs> yeah. We've had people rip holes in the counter reaches. Yeah. I oh, yeah. And be like, you know what, really? Like? There's like concrete and nuts and bolts and like all the scrap metal that's left over. Yeah, it's not it's solid. solid. It's not solid. It's, it's only like metal. it's only it's only like not even an eighth of an inch thick. It's, it's a little thicker down here, maybe. Not really. Four. So eight. look right here, Kyle. You can see exactly how thick that counterweight is. So that is literally how thick counterweights are. Can you see? Can you see? Can, can you see? Can, can you see? About twice as thick as a panel door, and it is full of concrete. Well, some of them are only like full like here. I've seen some with a hole in here. I try not to cut them open if I don't. Try not. <laughs> So you're saying you don't take the panel off to see what's inside your counterweights? No, I mean, you, you, you never know. You never know. It's it's like the mystery machine. Could be gold bars in there. Probably. Could be. As they, Is know, that why they cost so much? Yeah, that's why they <laughs> we've just so figured it out. That's how we get gold over here. A lot, a lot of yellow over there. <laughs> yeah, that yellow gold. All makes sense now. <laughs> Till next time. It must be true. <laughs> All right, so I uh, tested both of them out, the Cabelco 350 and the Hyundai 330. He actually put the uh, big bucket on the uh, Cabelco. Both have their pros and cons. That one has a few less hours. That one has a little bit more hours on it. Bigger bucket, a little bit smaller bucket. But this one is also a little bit easier to move. This one should be around 80,000 I think it's 77 minus the coupler and bucket so probably 81 or so this one's going to be a little bit bigger a little bit heavier uh this one's more money than this one decisions decisions Taking them both. but I'm buying both. but what Kyle I have made a decision and I don't know which one I'm getting but one of these two machines I'm purchasing. Which could it be? I don't know, but you're not going to find out in this video, so to be continued.